thank you one and all for being here and participating in this and all the speakers thank you for letting me share the screen time with you guys i would just uh, go ahead and share my screen now so i'll be uh, introducing you to the invest india as well as the agni mission so to start off i would go ahead invest india is the national investment promotion and facilitation agency of the government of india under the department for uh, promotion of in, uh, investment and internal trade ministry of commerce uh, invest india has uh, two uh, works with the government as well as the industry we work with the central government the states the foreign missions agencies on the industry hand side of it we work with associations corporations institutes uh, professional uh, advisors right uh, here is a quick snapshot of what invest india does we provide the awareness and engagement business advisory strategy and implementation investor aftercare is one of the most important aspects at invest india uh, how we take care of somebody who has already put in money into the country and then how we do uh, facilitate for them later on and uh, the, then here is a quick snapshot again of all the business requests that we have uh, facilitated in the past uh, around 235000 plus we work with 143 nations 37 sectors 33 states and union territories that is the reach of invest india we have been awarded by various global organizations uh, particularly in different various years for the past two to four years for sure uh, we are awarded to be a great place to work for and i vouch for that so moving forward uh we work with the prime minister science technology innovation and advisory council uh it has nine missions under it uh accelerating growth of new india's innovations is one of the nine missions uh under the prime minister science technology advisory council innovation advisory council and it is uh, chaired by the principal scientific advisor to the government of india uh it is the national technology commercialization program which provides dedicated support for commercialization of india's r&d as well as uh, the, uh, the the innovations that come forward it is a very easy mechanism that we follow at agni uh, somebody can just go on to the agni uh, website which is agni.gov.in uh, submit your technology there is a quick form that you follow through and then one sector expert we have different clusters and different sectors that we have divided the agni team into one sector expert would evaluate your technology based on the form that you filled then we go ahead and understand how we can help you in your commercialization journey and how we can make your story a success story to uh, facilitate that we set up a call with the innovator or the team of innovators and uh, understand the path forward and then as as uh, discussed in the meeting we would go forward with the de-risking or con uh, connecting to potential adopters and then obviously eventually it is the commercialization that is the aim of uh, agni mission right uh, so how this works is agni mission has a great ecosystem uh, in place we have innovators where we have startups you know uh, innovations coming from startups incubator labs research labs academic institutes then we do the de-risking bit where we have financial institutions incubators accelerators and uh, the various kinds of uh, variety over there in the tech de-risking sector then we go on to the technology adoption once the uh, the technology is market ready we have uh, the supply and the demand all together so if uh, we have global companies large indian companies government departments and all these uh, things are intermingled so we supply the technology to the person who actually needs the technology and that is how the agni ecosystem works to go forward i would like to highlight on one of uh, what what activities have happened in the past and especially highlight on how we work throughout the pandemic to uh, uh, commercialize technologies that were uh, 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 trying to fight against the covid uh, virus that we're facing these days so uh, we did technology scouting and we do technology scouting on regular basis for innovation challenges incubation acceleration investment opportunities innovation uh, we at agni or uh, believe that innovation leads to expansion of capabilities of a company so to enhance that the whole sector uh, a lead takes care of uh, 
the project altogether. And then eventually, once uh, the focus sectors, the innovations have been taken forward by Agni, the eventual outcome of that is we get pilot uh, pilot orders, we get incubation support, we get acceleration support. You know, we help in licensing or a business order or funding. As as mentioned over here in the past, we've we've done it for the quick snapshot of the recent uh, successes that we have had. You can have like. IKEA, uh, Social Alpha is a great partner, Tata, DRDO as well. And to uh, take care of the process, Agni does a one-on-one -on -one matching. So we uh, do the tech scouting for the one-on-one -on -one matching and this, how this works is a particular industry, a particular person would come to Agni, uh, a particular organization would come to Agni with a specific pool uh, of what technologies they want or the portfolio that they want and Agni scouts for those technologies in that specific area and then goes forward with facilitation of those. So the recent successes that we I can talk about myself is uh, we had a partnership with Bayrak as well as the ACT grants and we got uh, around eight technologies funded from these grants. During the COVID times, we had uh, an outreach call to the auto incubators all around the nation calling for innovations uh, that have uh, supported in the the fight against COVID-19. And we got around 200 plus applications for that area. Then we also facilitated, so we got a, a requirement from Varanasi and Chandigarh cities saying that we need large area sanitization technologies. We sent them a portfolio of technologies that we had, we had received from these incubators. And eventually Garuda Aerospace was one of them that was selected by these cities and then it was deployed at those cities. And uh, that was something that Agni uh, did all while this pandemic was going on and people were uh, stuck in the lockdowns. So, uh, so this is how it works. Apart from that, now during the new era, obviously the new normal, we can't do uh, in-person meetings and that's why we are on this uh, global uh, Zoom platforms and virtual platforms. But back, <laughs> back in the days, I would say, I like to call it that, we used to have uh, smart cities missions sit together, have uh, technologies and uh, uh, look at the technologies that Agni has in their portfolio and then go forward. What that led to, that led to 55 pilot orders right from the smart cities missions from the Agni portfolio. We picked them up. Uh, they picked them up. Then we had uh, discussions with the ministry, ministry of Electronics and IT. And we realized what kind of technologies that they want. We understood their needs and then created a portfolio specifically for them. Same with FPOs and uh, other organizations, this is how Agni works. We realize the demand, we uh, give them the supply and uh, help everyone in their commercialization journey. And uh, as Agni is pouring into the space sector, I would like to have all of you who are space enthusiasts, who are space startup uh, people who have innovations into the space sector to apply to agni.gov.in and then we can help you make more uh, success stories and we would like, uh, Agni would definitely like to be a part of that. So that is it from uh, my end on Agni. You can reach out to us on uh, the following platforms. And if you have any queries, please feel free to reach out to me. And thank you again, Head Start, uh, for giving me the opportunity to present Agni. Thank you, Advet, for uh, briefing our audience about uh, Agni as well as Invest India. Uh, now, may I request uh, Sri Vivek Singh, uh, Associate Scientific Secretary at ISRO, uh, for his keynote talk. Do we have, uh, do we have Mr. Uh, Sri Vivek Singh? Okay, great. Hi. Hey, hi. Good afternoon to all of you. I'm Vivek Singh, Associate Scientific Secretary at ISRO Headquarter, Bangalore. Let me first take this opportunity to thank the organizers for providing me this opportunity to talk to you today from this platform of Space 2.0 Frontier Technology. The focus in today's discussion is emerging trends and opportunities in the space sector in India. As all of you are aware that today we all are driven by the vision of transforming India and make our country self-reliant. In this journey, all the sectors of economy and the society have a great role to play. One such area 
is the space sector. I will be mostly focusing on this sector alone. Opening up of a space sector leading to greater participation of industries, MSMEs, startups, academias is expected to bring great benefits to the country. It is to be noted that till now space activities were carried out by ISRO alone. The role of private sector was limited to supply of parts, components, materials, etcetera, etcetera. Hence, the productivity in the space sector was confined to the order of what ISRO can achieve. Now, today if this output has to be improved in space sector in our country. We at ISRO strongly believe that private sector must engage in end to end activities, which includes building and launching of rockets, developing different types of satellites and providing space based services for all the sectors including the societal applications. Now, today approximately 17,000 employees of ISRO are engaged in uh, say high end space R and D as well as the operational activities in the areas of uh, launch vehicle, satellite, launching as well as developing satellite applications. If the space sector is opened, the potential of the entire country which constitutes of industries, MSMEs, startups and also the academia can be utilized to scale up the benefits from the space technology. And this will be a real game changer for our country in the space sector. This will not only result in an accelerated growth of this sector, but will also enable Indian industries to be an important player in global space economy. It also has the potential for large scale employment in the technology sector and also scope for India to become a global technology powerhouse. Unfortunately, Today, we do not have a proper mechanism in place in our country, which can enable these changes. Now, for this purpose, a set of reforms has been approved by government of India in the name of unlocking India's potential in space sector. The first major reform is enabling the private players to carry out end to end space activities. They will be enabled to carry out all space activities, namely building of rockets, satellites, provide launch services, own satellites and also provide space based services. In addition, industries will be offered opportunities to undertake R and D activities. They can also be part of science and interplanetary missions. This is planned to be done through announcement of opportunities, 
one such announcement of opportunity has already been offered in human space flight program by ISRO. This will provide a level playing field for all enterprises interested in space activities in the country. Now, in order to enable and support the industries, Government of India has approved recently an establishment of an autonomous nodal agency called Indian National Space Promotion and Authorization Center, in short, in space. This will be under Department of Space as a separate vertical for taking independent decisions with respect to permitting and regulating the activities of private companies in a space sector. This is going to be a major system and reform as far as Department of Space is concerned. The in space will have its own directorates to deal with matters related to technical, legal, safety and security, promotion as well as monitoring activities. So, that they can independently take decisions. The board of in space will have representation from industry, academia and government of India, so that the concerns of every sector is taken into consideration while arriving at any decision. In space will act as a national nodal agency for hand holding and promoting private sector in space endeavors. Based on in space directions, ISRO will also share its technical expertise as well as the facilities which are very, very cash intensive for private players. Now, in space uh, will also allow the companies to build temporary facilities within the premises of Department of Space as per their need and feasibility. Industries can directly approach to in space for all DOS related issues as a single window mechanism. In a space will independently evaluate the process, the requirements and once in a space gives its decision, it will be binding on all the stakeholders. Now, in a space mechanism may take another 3 to 6 months to really become operational. However, industries need not wait for such a system to be formalized. They can start applying through DOS in the interim. DOS has formed a high level committee to process the requirements and do the needful for the intervening time period so that there is no delay for the industries to carry out their activities. In fact, we have already received several requests from private companies and we are in technical discussion with them for their needs for the support sort. And I am glad to inform you today that we have noticed very few industries are almost reaching a very advanced stage in their activities. There is one more area which needs to be improved in order to facilitate the industries to carry out the task effectively and efficiently. Now, such areas of policy includes the SATCOM policy and remote sensing policy, which are of course, being modified and at the same time, a new policy 
on navigation is also being brought in. I must share with you that our National Space Act is also in a very advanced stage. This will provide necessary tools to in space in taking decisions and facilitating private entities effectively. The next reform is for the role of New Space India Limited, in short we call it NCEL, a public sector unit under Department of Space which needs recalibration to transform the approach from a supply driven model to a demand driven model for all the space based services. Now, NCEL will be empowered to take over the operational launch vehicles, satellites as well as application development activities and will execute them through industry consortiums. NCEL will also undertake technology transfer activities between DOS and industries. Therefore, NCEL will definitely provide a very good opportunity for private entities to grow in future. Now, coming back to ISRO, it will continue to carry out its activities with special emphasis on development of advanced technologies, missions and capacity building. In addition, ISRO will also wholeheartedly support private sector as per in space decisions. With this, I believe that India will transit in coming few years into a new space era wherein many startups, Indian industries and academia will play a significant role then unlock the potential of space sector. I invite wholeheartedly the private players to come forward and carry out their space activities and make a India a global technology powerhouse. I wish all the prospective industries, MSMEs, startups and academicians the very best in their journey. Thank you.